Hello, bonjour, bienvenidos, bienvenuti, welcome to the Music Polyglot channel. If this is your first time around here, please subscribe to the channel so that you find out when more videos come up. If you're a pro, that was probably all you needed to know. If you want tab sheet music, check the Patreon page in the description below. Although, did you notice that funny chord in the second verses? Well, I'll show you what that one is when we break everything down now in a close-up. We are in standard tuning and we have a capo on the second fret. Remember that whenever we have a capo, we count everything from the capo. So fret one will be that, fret two will be that, etc., etc. And if we say a C major chord, it's going to be a C major shape from the capo. So let's find our first chord, which is actually a type of C major chord. It's a C add nine. And we're going to work on a strumming pattern on this chord. So the time signature in this song is 6-8. What does that mean? It means that we have six beats in the bar, meaning that we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc, etc. We count from 1 to 6. Remember rule number one of playing rhythm guitar, your hand goes down on the beat. That's rule number one. So if we have six beats in the bar, our hand's going to be going one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Notice that I am going to be strumming with my thumb just because Lizzie McAlpine strums with her thumb when she plays this song. But strumming with the thumb gives it a little bit more of a rounder, softer sound, which is really what the intention behind this is. So I suggest that you also strum with your thumb. Now, if we said that we're going to be strumming one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, the pattern in this song actually requires you to also strum the ands, which are the notes that you have in between your beats. So you have one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two. Okay. If my hand is going down on the beats, it's going to be coming up on the ants. So this is going to, to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. Naturally. Now, if you get used to thinking hand down on the beat, you really don't need to think about uh, the upstrokes at all, as long as you're synchronizing um, your down stroke with the beat. Cool. So that gives us, that leaves us with this strumming pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, and five, six. So we're ready to go through the chords. We have two sections in this song. We have a verse and we have a chorus. Let me play you the verse first and we'll go through the chords. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Low, and let's go through the chords. C at 9, E minor 7, back to C at 9, G6, D over F sharp, E minor, uh, C at 9, E minor 7, and D at 4 over A. One more time, check it out. One. One bar of C at 9, one bar of E minus 7, another bar of C at 9, half a bar of G6, half a bar of D over F sharp, back to C at 9, one bar, E minus 7, 2, 3, and D at 4 over A for two bars. 
Notice how the best way to play those chords is by not taking off your ring finger. Your ring finger will be on the third fret of the B string throughout, right? On the C at nine, then on the E minor seven, then again on the C at nine, then on the G6, on the uh, D over F sharp, and then back. The only chord for which you have to take it off is when you go to the D at four over A. Now, a quick note about this chord. Uh, think about it as a C shape, right? So C shape, but you go up two frets, one, two. You take the ring to the sixth string and you place the pinky where the ring was. Okay, so that's the best way of thinking about this chord. So you're going to want to practice that transition from the E minor seven to the D add four over A right, because that's probably the trickiest transition in the whole song. How's that going so far? Listen, if you're struggling and you would like a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me completely free by video call, contact me through my website in the description below. So we talked about that secret chord in the second verse. See if you can spot what it is. I'll play it for you. This is the beginning of the second verse, right? All normal here. So the secret chord happens on the second verse, the second time through. So just before we go into transition to the chorus. So that last time, instead of going C add nine to E minus seven, and then to the last chord, D add four, you go C add nine, B seven. Right. And this is a B seven for which you don't even need the pinky on the high E string. Okay, you just need those three fingers, uh, one, two, and three, as you can see on the diagram. And from there you go back to the C at nine, and then up to the D add four over A. And that only happens at the end of that second verse. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want tabs or sheet music, I have all that ready for you on my Patreon page. Check out the description below. During the choruses, the rhythm stays the same. There's a tiny variation um, the second time through that I'll tell you in a second. The harmonic rhythm is slightly different. Harmonic rhythm refers to how often the chords change. So let me play that chorus. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so did you catch that? We have one new chord. Let's play it slowly and I'll talk you through the chords, okay? So one, two, three, C add nine. One, two, three, four. And we have two bars of C add nine. Then one bar of G6. One, two, three. One bar of D over F sharp. One, two, three. And then back to C add nine. Two, three, four. Another bar of C add nine. One, two. One bar of G6 and one bar of D over F sharp. And here comes the new chord. I'll stop here. Okay. So this is an E minor, right? Like that. But instead of having your middle finger on the second fret of the D string, you have your pinky or your third finger if you prefer. Right, as if you were playing a power chord, really, from the fifth string second fret. And so, you have that F sharp, which makes it uh, an E minor nine, right? And then you play everything else open. So that's E minor nine. Lizzie McAlpine likes using this chord. This is one of the key chords in Erase Me as well. Check out the tutorial in the channel if you want to learn that one. So after that E minor nine, you go to your D add four with an A the bass. 
Now that's the first time through the chorus. In the second time through the chorus, there's a small rhythm variation. First of all, the second chorus is longer, so instead of going through the main sequence, C at 9, G and D over F sharp twice, you go through that sequence four times. And the first two times, the rhythm changes. Instead of you going one and two and three and four and five and six, and it's just on the beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, G6. D over F sharp, and again. And then for the third and fourth times, you go back to normal. And then a lot more quietly for the E minor 9. And the D at 4 over A. And that brings you to the end of the song. Thank you for staying till the end and see you next time. Hasta la próxima, arrivederci, au revoir.